Okay, so I've been looking around for uh, laptop solutions for a Raspberry Pi 4 and uh, obviously there's loads of different solutions around and uh, I think this one fit my bill probably the most out of all of them uh, and this is from 2011. It's a Motorola Atrix lap dock. So I bought this second hand and uh, I'll show you what it's like because uh, the box and it came shipped like this so there was no other packaging around it the, uh, it just had a label on here uh, and it and it's just as is but it's it still remained in remarkably good condition so let's spin it around and open it up and show you what it's like inside so you can see i've got the uh, little perspex stickers that would have been covering things on there so nothing's changed there if i open up if I open up this panel, you can see the charges in there. I haven't even got this out yet. I haven't needed to charge it, even though I've used it quite a bit. There's still enough charge in the lap dock, and I'll go through that in a minute. So charger is all intact. Uh, if I take out the lap dock, you can see the condition is really good. It's a funny surface. I've just cleaned it, um, but it's, it always shows like smears and things. But actually, from a scratches point of view, uh, it's pretty good. So it also, and the reason I bought this one is I was really interested in trying the phone out. I know it's a 2011 phone, but I was really interested in seeing what it was like uh, and how it worked with the Linux. So if I start it up, you can see this has got a modified operating system on it. It's using CyanogenMod, uh, and I think it's nine, I think was the one that, that shows up. I don't know if it tells you on boot, but, uh, but it actually works fine. The battery works fine. Uh, and uh, it's reasonably swift. Although at the time, I did see a video on this phone uh, where it was compared to an iPhone uh, 4 and the iPhone 4 from an interface point of view and the speed and everything was way, way better. So you can see uh, that it's got this modified version on it. The one thing it hasn't got is the Linux uh, that uh, you would normally find on this phone when it was new. So when it when it docks with the lap dock, and I'll show you what happens with that. Let's get rid of this. So you can see here, I've got the laptop. If I was to pull this back, it's got a micro HDMI and a micro USB socket, which conveniently is on this phone. But also on this phone, you can see the back cover has never been taken off. Uh, and it's in brilliant condition. The whole lot is in excellent condition. So when you dock the phone on, you can see that it's docked on the back here. Uh, if I then flip the screen open, this little white light comes on to show that it's booting. Okay, so you can see uh, that it's showing the display of the phone when it's docked. If I close it down, then it switches back to the phone and you can see the phone works like a normal phone. But if I flip it up, so you can see that this is using a version of Android. It's a slightly lower resolution because it's playing on this screen and it's not adjusting to it, but it still looks all right. Uh, and you can see the apps that are on there. This is rooted, this phone, and there are loads and loads and loads of uh, images on it that I can choose to uh, install onto it. And I've actually been through several of them trying to get the Linux to work because I really wanted to try the Linux, not that I was going to use it, but I just wanted to see what it was like uh, after all these years uh, and see how ahead of its time uh, this sort of thing was. And it, the display is excellent quality. I'm really pleased with that. Uh, I'm not worried that uh, I bought it and it's not showing the Linux. There are tutorials online, but I've gone through several of them. I can't, I just can't find the right one uh, to be able to restore the Linux to it. But I didn't really buy it for that, but I did buy it with the phone because I thought it'd be interesting to see. But if I go into settings, there you go. So Android version 4.03, this is an MB860. Cyanogen 9 is on it. And somewhere along here, it tells you uh, about WebTop. Maybe that was in one of the other operating systems where it talks about WebTop, um, but uh, it says not available. Uh, and I have tried to download it and install it separately. And I've just clicked on the wrong thing because I'm doing this from a funny angle. Let's go back to the desktop. But uh, yeah, this uh, ROM manager is already on here. Uh, and I can restore from backups that the previous owner has had. The box, the packaging, the phone, the battery life is amazing on this. So, that, so the battery on this, if I tap this button, I haven't charged this. It's still got two little dots on it. Uh, and uh, I've, I've been using it for, for several days. I've been playing around with it. It's supposed to get about 10 hours. And I would say that it's rarely been charged because 
uh, the battery hasn't depleted uh, over time. It's, it's really, really good. So it came with a micro SD card, eight gig micro SD card, and uh, I've been playing around with that. And uh, it came with a load of stuff on it, a load of photos, a load of videos, nothing had been wiped off it. Um, but also it comes with loads of images for uh, Cyanogen Mod 7, uh, Cyanogen Mod 9. Uh, I think there's a newer version on there. There was a load of official Motorola Atrix uh, ROMs on there, and you can you can just restart it. You hold down the volume down button and power, and it flips into it, and you can just restart it with another ROM. But none of those ROMs had uh, what I wanted on there, which was the version that came with uh, the WebTop software, the Linux uh, and Firefox and things like that. But that's not really a problem. Uh, I'm sure I can get around it eventually. I did buy this just to use it with a Pi, but I thought it was interesting to be able to show it with the phone. So if I close that up, you can see that's how it looks. Uh, and it's a 11.6 inch. It's a 1366 by 768, and I usually use 1080, but um, what I've been doing is just writing down on which SD card I've adapted to work with this. Not everything boots up, but I'll just show you the cables that I've so far been using. Okay, so if I flip this open, I already said this is micro HDMI. This is a slim HDMI cable to micro HDMI female, uh, and then I've plugged in an, a male HDMI to micro HDMI. There's probably other ways of doing this, but it, the, the black cable was the cable I already had. Uh, so if I pop that on there, that fits really nicely. And the reason it fits nicely is because I took this bit off, which is the the housing of the dock, and you, you don't really notice it to look at it, but it means that it's got a little bit tighter uh, that it can make a connection, and it really does make a very good connection. Now, with older Pies, you could power them from this micro HDMI, um, and, and that works fine, um, but uh, not with the Pi 4, uh, which uses more power. And actually, I haven't tried it with this case. What I think I might do is unplug I've unplugged the power now, so it's not using any extra drain or anything. So uh, I've got Twister OS on here, uh, which is uh, resized to 1280 by 720. Weirdly, I'm sure this is uh, 1366 by 768. I can't get it to boot at that, but 1280 by 720, it works fine. So this cable is my hard drive cable, which is USB A to A. Uh, a USB coupler, so that's basically female on each end. Then I've got USB-A to USB-C, and I know you can do this better, but it, these are cables that I already had because I've got loads of cables. Uh, and then I've got this, which is micro USB, and it's USB-C on the other end. So I can pop that in, but I won't pop this second one on yet. I'll just start it up with uh, this cable, so micro HDMI in, obviously USB-C in to power it and that's going to start booting up uh, and if I pop that on there once it started there you go so now I can flip this up and you can see that it's booting up loads of reflection okay so you can see that it's booted up Twister OS but it is at a very very low resolution now this is because I've been playing around with it because some operating systems I couldn't get to boot even though I'd booted it up on another computer and lowered the resolution, it still wouldn't work. So let's go into terminal. And uh, I found this, uh, which I haven't used before. I haven't needed it before, so I guess that's why I haven't found it. But this HDMI underscore safe uh, is in the config.txt, but it's generally got a hash here. Uh, I always forget that you can't just mouse click. There you go, so shift and three. So if I put the hash in, you can see it says HDMI safe. It's gone blue now, so that means that that line is not being used. So it's not gonna to default to 640 by 480, which is a, a safe mode. So if I do control O and then enter to save that change and then control X uh, and then let's just do reboot and see what happens. I've been trying to work out why certain things have and haven't booted. And I still haven't quite got there yet, but once you get something to boot, it's absolutely fine. Uh, but uh, but some operating systems I've struggled to get booting. So like now, I think it's going to work this time. Yeah, because the display's on. Sometimes the display just goes black, and that was why I was using that HDMI safe. Uh, so let's see. Is it going to boot up at 640 by 480, or is it going to give me 
what I want, which is 1280 by 720. No, so it's still 640 by 480, but let's see if that's changeable in here. Settings, display, resolution. Yeah, 1280 by 720. That wasn't there before, so uh, but I when it was on the HDMI safe. So let's click apply, and that will change that resolution, and hopefully it will show it. Yeah, perfect. So let's hit close. So, so Raspberry Pi OS, what it does is it changes the resolution. It says, do you want to keep this resolution? Twister doesn't do that. So you've got to be careful when you're changing the resolution within an operating system. You can always put it in another monitor, which is what I do. But as you can see here, so it looks great. Uh, so this resolution is good for an 11.6 inch screen. Uh, and you can see the mouse trackpad is nice and responsive. Um, I, can, I can move up and down. Uh, with the slider by holding the left click as you would and I just let go of it. There you go. It has sound, not great sound uh, if I'm honest. So if I click on Chromium and let's just get it to play something. So this is, uh, yeah, this is overclocked. Now I had thought that overclocking would make a difference uh, with the amount of power that it could supply over HDMI, um, but it didn't seem to make any difference. So now if I want to scroll down, I've got to use the, the drag bar and I'm so used to just using two fingers to either zoom or to move around. So if I was to click on something, let's go with this fan case video. Right, how are yesterday? ZV-0088. So you can hear I have a very thin voice on it. Well, I don't know where the speaker is, but it but it's a pretty, a pretty weedy speaker. But I could always use Bluetooth headphones or a Bluetooth speaker with it. Uh, so if I wanted to, and I would, I would often do that for better sound anyway. But um, yeah, so I'm going to cover more of this. Uh, I just wanted to show it initially and show where I was at. Okay, so I've gone a bit closer in so you can see that the pitch quality is decent. So I have a click on here and shut it down. Let's show you what happens. So it shuts down. Let's flip that closed. And if I disconnect the power from the Pi, the light still stays on and this is because it's taking some power from the micro USB socket. It's not enough power to, to power the Pi even with an on the go adapter and things like that but uh, I thought it was interesting that it still lets power go through it. I did have this cable plugged into the Pi which would have been great which was uh, micro USB so that goes on the end here like that and then it's got micro USB socket so that goes on here and that goes straight into the Pi so super super neat and then I just add my HDMI socket and power to the Pi but unfortunately this isn't a data cable it's just a charging cable so if I was to plug the power back in now uh, it wouldn't restart what I need to do is unplug this USB so there's no power going into it I can plug it back in again now and it won't boot up so now if I plug in the USB-C you can see that the green light is on. I can flip open the laptop and we can see it booting up fine. So I'm going to plug in my Xbox controller, wired Xbox controller, uh, which is that one. Uh, but I'm also going to plug in, uh, now this is a little micro SD card where I've got all my ROMs, uh, 128 gig uh, SanDisk, and it's in this USB adapter. I'm going to plug this into the back of the laptop because the laptop has two USB sockets. I can now go into File Manager and you can see that it shows up. So the laptop has an on-the-go adapter which detects the USB that you plug in. So I've added a USB, uh, well, but it's basically got two USB sockets, so I've added an extra USB socket to my Pi. And if I close that down and start, so with RetroPi, I think you still are supposed to start it up from Terminal. Uh, so I would imagine I've done it recently. No, I haven't done it recently. So let's just type it in. So emulation station. So I've got a controller plugged in there. I think it's been configured on this one. Oh, it hasn't. I'll just configure it. So this wouldn't have uh, got my ROMs yet. So it needs to be restarted. So let's do uh, quit and restart emulation station and see if it picks up my ROMs from the USB socket on the back of the laptop. Ah, so what that means is that it's not enabled. Right, okay, I know what this is. Let's just try and get a better laptop display. Uh, so 
optional packages. I don't know why this doesn't come installed in RetroPy because it, it's just the ability to recognize a USB stick in the back. There you go. So USB ROM service, click on that, install from pre-compiled binary, yes. Okay, so that's installed. So if I go back, 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 perform reboot. So now if I do quit and it picks up my ROMs, you can see it picked it up straight away. So if I pick, let's just go arcade. There you go. Here we go, and you can see that it's working fine. Right, so let's quit out of that. And let's just take the micro SD card out of here because this is a bit interesting. So let's pop that into a micro SD to USB adapter and pop this in the back of the lap dock. So here's the USB stick. So you can see I've got loads of ROMs in here. So there's uh, a German ROM, ice cream sandwich ROM, there's Google Apps, uh, Cyanogen Mod 11, 7, ATT Pure Stock Fruitcake. None of these unfortunately gave me the webtop interface when I connected the phone to the lap dock. But I'm going to revisit that uh, and uh, I've been trying all the ROMs out and uh, they work fine. Uh, I just can't get that web top to work properly. Uh, so if anybody has any tips, because I know other people have got lap docks uh, of, a, of a tutorial or anything that I can follow to be able to install that, I'd much appreciate that. Um, but what was interesting, and we're going to have to blur this out because there are some things on here uh, which are Motorola documents. And so I did a bit of digging. Uh, there were some photos on here as well. And one of the executives for Motorola used to own this laptop. And I think that's why the quality is so amazing on it. So I'm going to have to blur this out for you. So on this slide, one of these photos is the owner, the previous owner of this laptop. So who I got it from. And I'm not going to say who it is. Uh, but I thought it was interesting uh, and it was interesting also that they were trying loads of different ROMs. I thought that was quite, uh, it shows that they're into computers, but this hadn't had a lot of use on it. This, uh, this definitely uh, is like new, even though it's 2011, so it's nine years old. I'm really, really pleased with it, uh, but I will, I'll keep experimenting and see what operating systems I can work with it because not everything is booted first time and I'm trying to work out what to do to make it boot. I thought it was first of all resolution. I thought it was the overclock affecting it. Uh, I did find a setting for HDMI boost, but that isn't supported on the Pi 4 apparently. Uh, and also manually setting in the, the uh, resolution uh, is another option as well. But I'm playing around with that and different operating systems, but so far I love it. It's a great solution. It's been working on battery all this time. It's still probably got two lights yeah, it's still got two lights lit up down the bottom here. When I when I press the, the battery indicator, one, two lights are still showing up and I still haven't charged it. Okay, so thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.